Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vincenzo Bergella. Once again, welcome to Edgegram FM uh, Live. Uh, we're doing highlights again for the November issue, and I'm uh, honored to have uh, Mo Matre uh, with us uh, again. Uh, go ahead, Mo. Hi everyone, so nice to see all of you. Welcome back. Um, for those of you who haven't joined us before, I'm Mo Matre. I am a maternal fetal medicine attending at Tufts Medical Center, and I'm the director of the MFM Fellowship Program. Um, what we wanted to uh, show for you today, as usual, for those who aren't familiar with our format, we try to select articles that um, will impact how you may counsel or manage pregnant patients. Um, and we try to select articles that have a great study design and will be applicable not only to our MFM colleagues, but also to um, anyone who's caring for pregnant patients, whether that be OBGYN generalists, family medicine docs, nurse practitioners, um, midwives. Uh, and so uh, we hope you enjoy it. We're going to be doing graphical abstracts. And I've created the majority of the abstracts, but we are using the author's graphical abstracts when they've been provided. Here is the list of the articles that we are going to be highlighting today. Um, and you can feel free to look at them in detail on the AJOG MFM website. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Dr. Bergella and he can get us started. Thank you. So the first uh, trial we wanted to share is this one, uh, comparing six versus 12 hours balloon catheter replacement for the induction of labor. It's a meta-analysis of randomized trials. Uh, they actually put five trials together, almost a thousand patients, as you can see in this slide. And usually now, even at Jefferson, you know, we use 12 hours, you know, we keep the catheter 12 hours. If it comes out before, great. Otherwise, at 12 hours, we take it out. But there are, again, five trials looking at six um, hours earlier. And I guess somewhat surprisingly to you, but uh, it does make some sense, is that if you actually plan to take it out at six hours, most of that ripening has happened already. And you end up having, as you can see on the left side, on the right side on the slide, shorter insertion to delivery time, but more than four hours and actually surprisingly even a lower C-section rate with no difference in Bishop score, remote delivery time, duration of oxytocin or adverse outcome. So it is safe to take it out earlier and it seems like you may save some time uh, from insertion to delivery. Um, and uh, so certainly something to, to consider. No? The next study um, we wanted to um, highlight today is looking at the selective fetal reduction of uncomplicated dichorionic twins by parental request, comparing to expected management of ongoing twins and the pregnancy outcomes. And, you know, this is um, an interesting question, certainly it raises some um, ethical, uh, you know, considerations, but really how to counsel patients who are requesting this and, and trying to evaluate the literature and see what we can um, determine might be some um, effects by having uh, this elective fetal reduction. And that's what this group wanted to evaluate. So they performed a systematic review. They looked at two databases all the way up to December, 2023. They were able to find um, five cohort studies. Understandably, there haven't been any RCTs in this particular question. Um, and they performed this meta-analysis their primary um, outcome was to look at the prevalence of preterm birth. And then they also had some secondary outcomes in terms of the gestational age at delivery, um, the birth weight, and then trying to look at other adverse pregnancy outcomes like gestational diabetes, uh, preeclampsia, and stillbirth. Um, and what they found was that um, there was a decreased rate of uh, preterm delivery, particularly at less than 37 weeks, that was of moderate quality of that evidence. Um, what they did find is they did see some trends as well of a, a decreased incidence at other uh, common markers of less than 34 weeks, less than 32 weeks. They did find lower in incidences with elective fetal reduction for low birth weight. And then some studies also suggesting um, an improvement in uh, the rates of adverse pregnancy outcomes. What the authors wanted to um, say uh, and note is that a lot of these associations that they found, particularly in the secondary outcomes, was based on um, very limited data. And they thought that, um, you know, based on the grade criteria had low quality evidence. So they wanted us to interpret these associations with caution. And really what I think um, 
we need to be mindful of is that there should be some larger studies to evaluate this to really assess if there is um, uh, a benefit that we need to make note of, but certainly something to keep in mind when patients bring this up as um, a potential that they're considering. Thank you. Um, one thing I want to highlight is that you're making some of these beautiful graphic abstracts. Um, you know, some of the authors make them, but you make the ones that, you know, they're not made by the authors. So I tell all the authors, you know, please make these graphic abstracts. I think they're so helpful for kind of getting a snapshot of, of, um, of different papers. This one is on the association between perinatal depressive symptoms and child development from um, Emily Miller um, and uh, secondary analysis of a randomized study. So good perspective um, data on over 200 patients um, in which eventually the neurological um, developmental testing of the children was followed to five years of age. So unusual to have such long um, follow-up. Uh, the antepartum screen for depression was positive 34% of the time and the postpartum 15% of the time. Again, well done uh, screening. And interestingly, and somewhat reassuringly, that's why I thought this was so important, that patients with descent depressive symptoms compared to those without um, had no worse outcome in terms of the child IQ at five years of age. Um, there are many things, obviously, that can affect child IQ, genetics, environment, et cetera. But at least in this well-done prospective study, this was reassuring that um, depression was not associated, maternal depression was not associated with child IQ of five years of age. Um, here uh, we have one of our graphical abstracts from our authors. This was a study performed in China. This was an RCT evaluating the use of um, calcium in addition to oxytocin when um, inducing patients at term who have premature rupture of membranes. Um, and the um, idea behind this is that we know that um, oxytocin, uh, when it binds to receptors, it releases calcium, and that is essential for uh, uterine myometrium contractility. And so the um, hypothesis is that giving additional calcium may have a synergistic effect and improve contractility and improve the success rate of induction for um, women who come in with PROM. So in this uh, single center, uh, RCT. The patients uh, over 200 per 210 per group were randomized to either have the regular infusion of oxytocin versus having the regular infusion as well as a bolus of one gram of calcium gluconate. And then they evaluated the um, rates of preterm delivery, uh, sorry, rates of vaginal delivery within 24 hours. That was their primary outcome. And they did find a statistically significant difference. Um, and they found that the uh, more patients um, who had the intervention delivered faster, um, uh, within 24 hours had a faster uh, time to delivery. And they did not see any um, change in C-section rate, uh, tachycystole, uh, fetal heart rate decels, um, and didn't seem to have any um, higher rates of uh, adverse maternal or neonatal um, outcomes as well. So this um, could be helpful uh, to um, consider for um, improving our rates of induction in women who present with term prom. Yeah, I think it's so important to have, you know, shorter and shorter, more efficient induction. Uh, the last um, paper we want to review is this one on what is the best mode of delivering noliparous singlet in term vertex pregnancy. A pretty important, obviously, and still controversial issue. Uh, this paper put together other papers. Um, it's kind of an expert opinion. You can see the other authors with me on the um, on the slide: Dr. Adewale, Rana Bonani, Chaham, Belusi, uh, Dwight Rouse, and John Barrett. Um, really, the evidence is that if you plan a C-section in this low-risk um, individuals, again with their first pregnancy, singleton term vertex you end up having, by systematic review of some randomized studies, possibly better neonatal outcomes, as you can see, um, less low pH, less you know, complication, less parental death, um, obviously less chorea if you don't labor and urine incontinence for the women, um, but more wound infection and more of an issue with placenta career in the future if you do the C-section. Versus if you plan the vaginal delivery, and most of the time 
these are successful, uh, even in these randomized studies, um, your recovery time is probably quicker, you have less wound infection, less secreta, um, with the issue that, again, the, the trials um, showed more pelvic floor disorders and um, and more satisfaction with planned vaginal delivery, as many women, most women, by far want a vaginal delivery if possible. Um, with that, we also find that um, a lot of people now delay their childbearing um, and actually desire only one or two babies. Um, and so one of the thought of this paper is that perhaps we need a randomized study um, to compare planned vaginal delivery at 39 weeks versus planned kind of trial of labor and vaginal delivery at 39 weeks in this low risk women looking at perinatal morbidity and mortality and also longer term maternal morbidity and mortality even looking eventually at uh, pelvic floor disorders uh, depression score satisfaction bonding and all kinds of stuff we are putting together a large group of investigators you're welcome to uh, participate uh, but this is i think an interesting um, expert opinion paper um, worth um, reading and uh, certainly worth, uh, worth uh, discussing. Wonderful. Maybe more you can wrap it up. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, we will be um, uh, showing our December highlights soon, um, hopefully before the uh, holiday break. Um, so stay tuned for the dates for that. But thanks for um, joining in, and we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye, everyone.